SEGA Hello, good evening and welcome to the latest Total War Warhammer campaign walkthrough video. Today we're going to take a snapshot of a campaign we've been playing as the Empire, and the usual caveat supply, we're still a good two and a half months from launch, and well into balancing and polishing. So you may see some placeholder bits and bobs, and many of the values on show may well change as we nudge everything into place. Okay, so we're 71 turns into the game here, and as you can see from the overview map, we own the full provinces of Reichland and Middenland. We started by conquering Reichland, and we've recently taken the three regions of Middenland from the faction of Hockland, who just weren't playing ball diplomatically, which frankly is their loss. In terms of our immediate neighbours, we can see that Bretonia has been rather badly ganged up on and pretty much taken out of the picture. The vampire faction of Musalon has emerged the strongest here, while Borderlow is very much in the game still, as are our dwarfen chums of Karak Norn. Vissenland rules to the east, and beyond them the vampire factions who are breaking out of the Sylvanian provinces towards us. Looking at the diplomatic status overlay, we're feeling relatively secure at the moment. All factions marked blue are our allies, testament to some good treaty making on our part early on. Just north you can see the Skulltakers, a roving tribe of savage orcs who tore into our territory some turns earlier, but we managed to send them packing. So with friends around us, but vampire enemies in the mix too, there's all to play for. Guarding our northernmost point of expansion and providing much needed public order to the newly conquered and therefore unstable province of Middenland is Emperor Karl Franz himself. He's got a fairly well balanced low to mid tier army with him composed of great swords, swordsmen, crossbowmen, Reichsguard and mounted pistoliers. Karl himself is currently equipped with the sword of swift slaying, a charm shield and an obsidian lodestone which offers him some magic resistance on the battlefield. Skills-wise, we've been focusing largely on improving his combat abilities, making him an all-round better warrior, and we've unlocked his early mounts, so let's upgrade his Pegasus for a tasty buff to its charge bonus. Otherwise, the only other skill we've given him is in his campaign tree, which helps his army to march further on the campaign map each turn. We've yet to tackle his quest chains and earn his epic gear, but we'll definitely be making time for those soon, as the buffs on them, as you can see, are pretty major. Now, each race has its own set of campaign mechanics, and something that's unique to the Empire is its offices, which we can see here on the Officers panel. Lords and Legendary Lords are the only character types who can be assigned to these roles, and the only character who can be promoted to the office of Emperor is, of course, Karl Franz, for fairly obvious reasons. Other Lords can be assigned when they reach the level requirements as well, so let's assign Felix von Rauken to the Office of Treasurer. Now this is going to boost trade income faction-wide for us, and any infrastructure income in any friendly region he's inhabiting. There's a number of other panels we can check up here, but we're going to look at the Forces tab and find Felix in our list of characters. So there he is, and we can see his new title has been added to his name. In fact, let's rename him to something a little more befitting his new station in life. Yes, I think that should do it. You can rename all your characters except your Legendary Lords, of course. OK, let's head back over towards Altdorf, and we're going to have a look at the Empire Tech Tree in a bit more detail. So techs in the Empire Tech Tree are unlocked as you build specific buildings. So once you've built a rally field, for example, it offers buffs to our core infantry, as does the barracks. The blacksmith improves weapon and armour upgrades to various units, so let's go ahead and crack on with researching improved light cav armour. Now, Altdorf is your starting city as the Empire and the provincial capital, but it's the only city that you do start with. And to be honest, your first turns are probably going to be spent building up your forces and looking to expand and capture the entirety of Reichland. I think we had all these settlements under control by around turn 20, and much of our focus since then has been on improving our infrastructure to unlock better units and boost our income. Here in the building browser for Outdoor, you can see what we've built and of course what we're driving towards in terms of recruitment. Income is derived from our capital city, various cash generating buildings in outer settlements, plus any exploitable resources in the region. We've got some clay pits in Altdorf here, for example, so that's contributing towards our trade tariffs. And if we examine Grunberg here, we can see that certain chains are limited by the maximum size of the settlement. And with pastures in this region, we can use cattle to bring some good growth and replenishment benefits to the province. 
Standing resolute outside Altdorf is our second legendary lord, Balthazar Gelt, who is currently being harassed by a Chaos Hero character, the rather aptly named Fator Death Metal. No, not for we only recently recruited I Balthazar to our campaign, so he's pretty low level still, but we can see from his skill tree that he's very much magically focused. And the more lore knowledgeable amongst you may recognise Balthazar's epic gear in his quest chains here. Now, obviously, we want to get him casting spells in battle, so we're going to unlock the spells Searing Doom and Gehenna's Golden Hounds, both of which are offensive spells. Now, we're going to stick Balthazar in Altdorf for now, where he'll contribute to public order for a while. Very well. I'll move. A quick glance over at our neighbours here reveals the influence of vampiric Musalon. Uh, corruption is spreading and twisting the foliage into something more vamp-friendly. Now, as we saw on the overview map, we have some vamps to our east too. And in fact, our mid-term game plan here is to keep our local loyalty solid, so we have some friends to call on if things start getting a bit too bitey on the borders. One last stop on our brief tour then, and we're going to head northeast, where we have one of our Empire Captain heroes on an exploratory mission towards the Chaos Wastes. Now! Rupert Sunscry here is making good progress into Uncharted Lands, and he really isn't that far from the Chaos Wastes now. And the mere presence of chaos is starting to twist the land as well, and just north of Rupert here we can see just how that's happening. Black rocks are rising from the stony earth, lava flows are opening up, and arcane artefacts are beginning to appear. Add in the bitter weather up this way, which only gets worse the further north you go, and you're looking at a pretty inhospitable and attritional landscape. OK, that's all for now. We hope you've enjoyed this gameplay snapshot, and do keep tabs on our social media channels for more campaign and battle videos coming your way very soon.